Hi, welcome back to the Dylan Rounds case. Welcome if you're currently here in the live premiere. Today we are using the latest material and latest footage of Jim Brenner from his recent court hearing on June the 5th. We're going to be analysing his body language, behaviour, facial expressions and see if we can come to some kind of conclusion does it align with what Candice Cooley and Justin Rounds have said, labelling Brenner as doing it as a sympathy act, appearing vulnerable, weak and ill, maybe so he gets a lessened sentence that people may feel sorry for him down the line. We're going to be taking a look at all of that today and I'm going to be sharing my thoughts, my analysis of Brenner, how he actually appears, okay? Be sure to react, chat, share your opinions and thoughts in the live chat on the right hand side. You might as well do so. And yeah, it's just a bit more of a hands-on video today, as I said. We can also carry on with one of the additional articles we didn't get round to from yesterday's video. We can read the article, check for any inconsistencies, contradictions, if that's the case, okay? And also take in mind, if you haven't already watched my previous video, an introduction, a backstory, and an insider analysis, insider information of what went down within and how things appeared from eyes of individuals that were in the actual courthouse at the time, if you call it that, there'll be a link down below in the comment section of this video pinned. Be sure to check that previous video out, okay? Right now, it's time to get more hands-on and do this body language analysis of Jim Brenner. Also, just to highlight and acknowledge from last night's live stream, shout out to X Doffy, the letter X, D-O-F-F-Y, I think. Shout out to them for their super chats. It's good of them. And as well, just as a shout out in general, Anyone watching right now or watching this video later, feel free to check out X Doffy's channel. There will be a link down below in the comments section so it's easier for you to find, um, just to acknowledge their presence, of course, because of them in the Super Chats and them watching the videos recently. No harm in doing so. As for, I guess, their channel, form of animation, form of live chats here and there. There's a range of different stuff and there might be people already on my channel that might be interested in that. So feel free to check the link out to X Doffy's channel, link down below. The only additional thing I do ask for and would appreciate, do not, you know, demonstrate resistance, okay? It's not necessary with this situation. Ex Doffy appears to be a good individual, so no resistance needed. Do people understand? Yeah? Okay. So, where should we start first? Well, no harm in checking the comment section, the previous video, as it's all to do with the Dylan Rounds case and Brenner's court hearing. See if any questions need answering, any additional interesting information. Comment section shouldn't be as long this time. We start from there and then we can move into literally the footage of the court hearing, okay? I will just arrange it to the newest. We start from the bottom. Glenn, shout out to Glenn for leaving a range of different comments. A bit random on this occasion, but just Glenn acknowledging what I said from what Skeptical said. <laughs> so yeah, there's Glenn. Jacqueline. I just got Jacqueline say, there's court records for Ed Harshberger that I couldn't copy and paste. Huh. Jacqueline, don't think so. Did YouTube remove it? Don't think so. Right. Well, I've looked through the comments and I don't see any other ones to do with the records or copy and paste them. If there's anyone in the chat right now, anyone out there that knows of court records for Ed Harshberger, if possible feel free to provide a link somewhere if you can it'd be interesting to get an idea backstory behind ed harshberger okay so like when you look back at you know court records past criminal history we've done it with brenner so 
no harm doing it with others that have been associated within the Dylan Rounds case. And if there is a certain pattern trend, maybe it could link to Dylan in some way. Or maybe it just highlights that a individual could be a bit of a threat. Just let me know in the chat your thoughts, your knowledge, if you can. Is there like court records of Ed Harshberger out there and what are they about? And in this occasion, Jacqueline wasn't able to copy and paste it unless it's some kind of privacy thing on a particular website. I don't know. Would a screenshot work? Maybe. What else do we have? Oh yeah, that was just a slight correction there. Jacqueline also saying, judging Brenner's movement, it's difficult due to his ankles being shackled. Don't know if it's a bar or chains they got him in. That's true. Fair point. Obviously, if you're chained up, strapped up, not like in that way, it can restrict movement. It can affect balance, possibly. So we'll definitely take that into uh, account when we look at the footage later on in this video. Tom Evans saying too many people following the Dylan Rounds case take their leads from Candice Cooley and Little Jimmy, also known as Jim Terry, and they have not been reputable sources. This is the thing. Many people following Dylan Rounds case. That statement was true up to a certain point. I'd say with a fair degree of certainty that not as many people look into the Dylan Rounds case now. You might get some people returning here and there once a month if there's like an East Idaho News Channel video update on the case as we've seen. You know, let's just take this into account, okay? So whether it be my coverage, whether it be the odd video by Lance Kelly when, you know, if he does do any more Dylan Rounds ones, you look at the views, different to how it was back in the past, right? Maybe about five, 400 people actively present on the Dylan Rounds case, being realistic. Four to 500 people. I know others will say, well, what about on Jim Terry's channel? What about on Bob Farrell's channel? Far Farrell's channel? You know, it's like over a thousand, whatever. That is true. But a fair majority of people go to those channels for other content, for other discussions, hangouts and chats. They're not interested or as bothered about the Dylan Rounds case. That's just a simple observation. But as for people interested in the Dylan Rounds case, active individuals looking into it, I'd say four to 500 people are still present to this day, right? But you look on East Idaho News, where they do the odd Dylan Rounds coverage video, which could be once a month or once every four or five months, depending the gap in between. And there's about fourteen to 22,000 people who just suddenly come on in. The fourteen to 22,000 people are most likely part-timers who only just pop in here and there. Once again, just a simple, straightforward observation. Okay, Might help you better understand who is who and who cares about the case and who doesn't and who has got other things going on or other interest, okay? What was the response from? Oh, wrong one. What is this? At least recent time, yeah. Very true, and I wish there were more of that. I don't understand why these people wanted to lead us like sheep into left field. So all I would say is, if, we're, if we are referring to maybe the odd local and the other channels out there combine them together forge a certain story narrative which can suit them so they can keep the case alive and active maybe add more mystery to it so it lasts longer and they can benefit in some way just like with simple mystery cases and maybe missing person mystery cases away from true crime there might be a discovery or a setup to make it into a mystery and it can spark, you know, popularity. It can spark all kinds of things and some can benefit from that and some don't clear it up or debunk it down the line. They just keep it open and active. Kind of the same within the Dylan Rounds case and with time we've done a bit of a clean up job making sense of things or trying to make sense of some stuff which has been somewhat successful, right? Move on. 
Beatrice Brenner will lose his benefits now that he's in jail. Also, he looks like he's smirking in the courtroom. That's interesting. I'll um, check out for that, see if Brenner does smirk or not. Really better double check that he has not been convicted, so benefits continue. Beatrice, no, they won't. Looks like he's not going home. Right, okay. Mm, okay. The benefit part is to do with uh, disability allowance, supposedly because Brenner doing his leg in in the past on two different occasions. Second occasion caused by another individual, though Brenner found a positive out of that event. So we've got that. Badger, you're welcome. Skeptical. Egda Frank Harshberger, not part of the burger bunch. <laughs> yeah, true. Barger, not burger. Mm hmm. How do people say his name, though? Ed Harshbarger? Barger? I've heard a couple of people say Ed Harshberger, but Harshbarger? Barger? What a dodgy name that is. 18 equals adult age in US. Oh, okay. If that really is the case, then why did it keep labelling Brenner, or some people, as Brenner being a child killer? How? How? If it's seen as an adult. Dylan was 19 years of age at the time, so he was classified as an adult. Charges, yeah. Skeptical. Studebaker. Studebaker, like the car. Studebaker. Okay. What's this one by Christy? Share her thoughts. I don't like when people judge criminals for their physical appearance. I mean, you all would have fallen for Ted Bundy, probably. So for me, Koberger looks like a normal young man, and Brenner now looks like a broken old man. But it's not like you knew before they were caught that they had in mind. Only because of their appearance, it's easy to judge when you already know what they did. In real life, you can maybe feel instinctively if a person is bad but there are a lot of grumpy old men and that they would never harm anybody because if we judge the perpetrator for his appearance, so we also are allowed to judge the victim. Not every victim is a saint. So, uh, yeah, the bit about Brenner, Cav looks broken, sad, lost. I agree with that, okay? Whether it's an act or, an, or not, planned or natural, he appears that way. Maybe if some people saw him for the first time, they could think, oh, Brenner looks really innocent. Oh, my God. Uh, but people that have been around for a long time will maybe thinking, oh, here we go, putting on the sub story to try and twist things, maybe. Different ways of looking at it, at least from my experience and not applying to criminals, but more so me applying it to the general public in life. It's not always been based off appearance, more so... The presence of an individual and it doesn't even have to be in real life there was an occasion a person from the same country and not far away just online where I didn't base it off appearance I based it off their presence and behavior in that I sensed that within a five-year period five years later they would screw me over in in different types of ways I had no right to say that because there was no true proof, okay? There was no physical proof to suggest what they were going to do down the line, but I just knew it in my mind. 0.5 second rule, as I said. And you know what? When I did confront them and said it, said it to them, they said, I'm so sorry, you're 100% correct. That's exactly what I was going to do. And when I heard that, it did knock me back a little bit because I'm thinking, wow, wow. How godlike am I to get that right? But at the same time, that dull feeling of, oh, I wish I wasn't right. I wish I was proven wrong. But, you know, it is where it is. So I guess some humans are built different where they can make predictions accurately, where they can get an idea about an individual or group, whether it be their appearance or more so their presence. Not everyone can do it. When most humans do... and when most humans do try to do it, it ends up backfiring, right? And then that whole judgment thing gets in the way and it's all clouded and then it all goes downhill from there. But because I've got it under control, it's under control. Okay. Is that it for the comments? Boom, there we go. So that's it for the comments. What we can do now is move on to the main focus of this video.
I think the best way to kick things off is to provide a backstory behind Brenner, visually speaking, as for observations made, before he was taken in by the police and after. How has he changed with time? Is it drastic or not? Before and after photos, right? We can do that and we'll do that right now. And then once we've got past that, we can get into the actual video footage. Um, I don't know if I need to acknowledge it now or later, but the video footage will be short because the video itself of the court hearing was short. I'll just focus mainly on the movement of Brenner and when he shows his face kind of towards the camera or to the side of the camera, okay? Just thinking of copyright related stuff. We don't wanna get messy there. Hopefully you understand. And we can also replay it several times as well as I commentate over it. I think that's the best outcome. So just repeat once more. What we're gonna do first is take a look at the photos of Brenner before and after he was taken into Weber County Jail, etc., and see if the changes are drastic. We can start there with the body language, the, the expressions on one's face, their presence, their appearance, right? Let's um, go on to the photos right now. Here is the first photo, and I think most people will be quite familiar with it. Now, this photo of Brenner was before he was truly taken into Weber County Jail and kind of like locked up, but this photo was after Dylan Rounds went missing, okay? So during the case of Dylan Rounds and trying to search for him and Brenner being involved questioned here and there, you know, this was the early days of the case, hence why he's walking about. Now, I don't know the exact date of when the photo was taken, but I feel maybe someone in the chat will know. So if you do want to fi um, fill in the gaps, feel free to do so. As for the background, I'm not quite sure where that is at, okay? It looks bluish in the back. Is that like a building? There is a tree there. I don't know if it's near a courthouse or not. But when you look at Brennan there, what can we infer from it? Well, he kind of looks on the big side, in a way. Bit of a stomach. Um, looks a bit scruffy, a bit messy in the face. He's got a bit of a, an odd facial expression. I don't know if that's him trying to smile or if it's, it's probably from the sun, squinting his eyes. As for his clothing... That clothing there is not the clothing which was retrieved from Brenner's trailer, which supposedly had blood on, okay? This is different clothing, okay? Um, he does have a John Deere hat on. It might be hard to see, but that is a John Deere branded hat or cap, whichever one you want to call it. Does it belong to Dylan's? Not from the looks of it, okay? Speaking of baseball caps, John Deere caps... We're still waiting, it's still pending the results, the data, DNA from that cap found by um, Kaylee and Ty Corbin documenting it on his channel. Not really heard much from that since. Is there anyone in the chat right now that has heard an update regarding that cap found in Lucid, Utah, which Ty Corbin documented on his channel? Let me know down below, okay? So... Feel free to share your thoughts in the chat right now. What do you think of this photo of Brenner? How does he appear to you? Does he appear healthy or unhealthy? Does he look like a threat or not? And I know, acknowledging what Christy said earlier on with her comment, it's just trying to get like an understanding to the foreshadowing events of what followed, right? How he appears here to how he appears now, worse off or better off. And the reason why that matters is if he is healthier now and it can be demonstrated in the photos, then it could highlight he's got a longer chance of living longer compared to how he did at that moment in time on screen. And you could say, well, why do you want him to live longer? Well, the longer he's alive for, the more chances you have at getting an answer from him as to where Dylan Rounds is at, right? So that's the bigger picture of it all. I mean, when looking at this photo, does he appear cold, cool, kind of like a psychopath, narcissistic traits? It's not possible to tell, if I'll be honest with you. In terms of the eyes, 
facial expressions. You can't get that that sense from it, okay? You could, like, guess, but it's not accurate enough. And even in my position, situation, I couldn't just say, oh, yeah, that person looks like a psychopath. They ha- in my opinion, at least, they just don't have the eyes. They don't have that deaf stare. They don't have that still look, emotionless look. Here, a little facial expression, right? And just for, like, the facial hair, a little bit mucky, a little bit messy, but as from what Candice Cooley has said, that's just what Brenner was like and also lazy. Now, yes, it is only a photo. We don't have video footage of Brenner walking about, which is unfortunate. Before we do move on any further, what I just want to ask as a question, does anyone have or know of someone that's got footage of Brenner out and about before the Dylan Rounds case, let's just say? You know, if we had that recent groundbreaking trend of footage of Dylan Rounds back in the past 2021, which Jim Terry provided and supposedly wanted to sell off to make some money, supposedly, does anyone have any old footage of Brenner? That would be interesting, right? To look at footage of Brenner, how he talks, how he behaves, you know, his appearance, his presence, how he walks back then. Is it any different to now? And, you know, in a more natural setting to observe his true behaviour. It is anyone that has footage of Brenner. Feel free to acknowledge it in the chat, maybe, if you can, right? Anyway, that all being said, let's move on to the next slide. So this one, and we do have two of it is to do with when Brenner was taken in for the first time Weber County Jail, and this was 2022, same year as this photo. So you can see the transition. The obvious transition is the environment. Here, he's like walking about three, and how you would imagine him to be before this photo as well. And here, locked up Weber County Jail at the time, right? You can see him in the back, sat down. I don't know what type of room this is, um, if you sit down for an interview or an interrogation, but this was, you know, in the early days of 2022, it was like one of the first pieces of video footage of Brenner, and it was shown on the news channel, I believe ABC4 News. I don't know if any of other news channels showed this or not, but yeah, you can see him in the background, you can see him sat in the in the back, kind of leaning over a little bit, a little bit of bad posture. Can't really make out too much from his facial expressions, of course. He appears to not be wearing the cap, of course. Why would he be when he's in there? Change of clothing, like typical overalls, I guess, if you're locked up there. But we can get a closer photo, don't worry. There you go, where he sat down. This is the best angle I could get from the footage. You can see his face. Um, at this moment in time, you know, what do you think? You know, he's wearing glasses this time round. Does Brenner need glasses? I don't know. But he's wearing them there, maybe because he had to read something, a statement or some kind of document. I'm not quite sure. But you can see how he's dressed, like blue overalls. As for one's presence, how does he compare here to how he did in this photo. Much of a difference? Let me know your thoughts. Brenner here, Brenner there. Is there much difference? Well, what I would say is maybe the hair. It looks like the hair. I don't know if that's hair on the side or if that's his beard. It's kind of hard to tell. It's probably connected, kind of. Whereas here, more, well, you can't say clean shaven, but had his beard trimmed down, doesn't look as messy. As for his hair, well, you can see that's been cut back because he's almost bold, almost as bold as Arizona Traveller, okay, it's just as a little reference. What about facial expressions, then? How does he appear there? I mean, you could say he appears a little bit lost, he looks a little bit lost. There was an extra bit of footage where, same, well, same material, where a few seconds later he kind of like looks up and he kind of pulls a sad face. I don't know if he was pulling a sad face on purpose or if he was just 
just a resting facial expression. You never know. But would you say Brenner appears more healthier here than how he did then? Anyone agree? Make sure to leave your thoughts in the chat right now. Do you agree that Brenner appears healthier here compared to the other photo? Just let me know. He's got the glasses on and doesn't seem to have any marks or scars on him. Anyone confirm or debunk? Does Brenner have any scars, cuts on him elsewhere? Any other wounds, injuries with the past or more recent time? Just get an idea because, as you know, a person's body can tell a story itself. Certain marks on a body can also tell a story. Maybe not always for good reasons or positive outcomes, but a story is a story and it can provide a maybe a, a background understanding about the person, what environment they were in, what they were surrounded by, good or bad, right? So uh, yeah, there's that. Now let's move on to the latest one, I believe. There we go. So this is the most latest up-to-date footage and photo of Brenner. And we do have one from the front and back. This one being the back shot. On the back it says Weber County Inmate. So still at Weber County Jail from the looks of it. It was said that he's in the ad SEG. So in protection. I think that's what Watcher of Crazy said. In protection. So... That would make me think that Brenner isn't with the general population of inmates. Brenner is by himself. Now, can anyone explain to me why is Brenner in that situation? If Brenner is more likely to suffer around the general population of inmates and people want him to suffer, then why is he not in that environment then? Why is he protected? Is he protected because things are still ongoing and he hasn't been truly convicted yet? Can anyone explain? Is it because Brenner just has to be protected for now because the case is ongoing and they need him? Maybe because of the information part? Because the plea has not been done yet, so there's no point putting him around the general population of other inmates? You get what I'm saying? It kind of makes sense to me in that way, but depends if that's really the case. But I feel some of you will probably know, so feel free to share your thoughts, your knowledge on the matter. But yeah, as for the environment of this photo and when it was taken, well, this was the 5th of June, well, like three, four days ago now, and it was Brenner's court hearing. Not much came out about it, to be honest. The next one has been pushed to the 31st of July, okay? So, a fair bit of time ahead, but just one of those things. And the environment itself is inside of the courtroom inside, well, courtroom in Brigham City. Brigham City, Utah, right? That's a location for you. When looking at Brenner here, right? Brenner being on the left, on the right, I believe, is his attorney. Correct me if I'm wrong, or one of his attorneys. Um, I don't know how old each individual... Well, Brenner is about 59 years of age. Person on the right, not quite sure. I think that might be one fair point to acknowledge, right? Just go back quickly. This photo of Brenner was when Brenner was 58 years old. And this photo is of Brenner, 59 years old. Only a one-year difference, but still. I've noticed people have said in recent time that Brenner, most recently, looks much older than he really does. Does anyone else agree with that statement? Would you agree? Quick question on the sideline. How old is Kurt Wadsworth? Older or younger than Brenner? Anyone answer? As for someone like Don Haitley, Don Haitley is said to be over the age of 60, okay? I guess that could tie in line with Don being retired, as Candy's Cooley has highlighted, and other people. Bit of consistency there. Regarding Chase Venstra, Chase Venstra is in his 40s, mid-40s, round about that, okay? Correct me if I'm wrong, Ben. 
As for Robert Aviles, I'm not quite sure. I think he's in his 40s as well. Or something tells me when Robert Aviles was arrested the first time round, when we saw those mug shots of him, he was about 39 years old. And he actually appeared older in looks than how, it, how his actual age is. Hmm. So you've got a range of different ages, right? But they're all still committing crimes or different types here and there. So, yeah. And they have re-offended. Not about Don Haley, though, but the others have. So as for Brenner himself, right here, right now, in the courtroom, how does he appear? I mean, you could say, well, what is the to tell from the back? Well, you can still get an understanding. So look at the posture of Brenner, right? Maybe you've got to take into account his age and possibly health, but Brenner's posture is slightly lacking. And you kind of sense that as well when he's walking, shuffling on in. I know he's got the cuffs on, but it's almost like the death march. He's just coming on in like this. He's not walking in confidently. Is he walking in like a scared, naive individual? I don't know. Maybe some people could see it that way. Hmm. I think what the problem is, but it is what it is, we don't have any other footage of a different time when Brenner may have walked into a court or was just walking about his property. So we can't compare and contrast there. But we have been able to at least with photos, so I guess that is something. But when you look at Brenner's neck, head, it's kind of slouching forwards. Do you know like when you get a turtle when it sticks out the shell and it's like leaning out? Not the best po posture, of course. Is that because of age? Is it just because of bad habits, leaning, possibly? If we compare to this photo, he's a bit slouched over, right? But then again, he could well be just getting up from the bench chair he's on, so that could explain that. Take in mind, we're just working with the material, what we have, so it might not always have the best context. Zoom on out. Though here, he's kind of leaning slightly, a little bit slouched. He's not like, you know, stood up or sat up right. Bit of poor posture. And you could say, in a way, like with hand placement, you know, depending, you know, how you make your appearance known, you know, if you're a bit slouched, slumped forwards with your shoulders or neck, you may not appear as confident, right, as someone um, who may be stood up tall, straight, good posture, shoulders out, chest inflated, almost like you're posing in a way. Do you know like when you get bodybuilders, they're doing that, they're posing because they're confident with themselves, confident with their ability and what they have to show. Whereas Brenner, yes, he's showing up, but maybe not with all the confidence and levels of invincibility he once had. Because let's not forget, Maybe here you could say Brenner is smirking, right? Maybe I didn't acknowledge that earlier on. Do you think Brenner is smirking here to the camera in a cocky way? Might be. As for the days of when Brenner was walking free, in the you know the beginning of the Dylan Rounds case, just like with June second spring cleaning, when the day before Brenner did have maybe, or, no, not the day before, the day before that, the 31st, Brenner had a slightly better opportunity to do the spring cleaning, but decided to do it when more people were present around the Grange Shed property. Brenner didn't care. He just did it, right? He felt invincible. Considering you had that like outstanding warrant, you had that, what, aggravated assault of the 69-year-old in 2021. And, you know, Brenner should have been apprehended immediately just for that, even though it was unrelated to Dylan Rounds, it should have, action should have been taking place, but it didn't to begin with. So because of the incompetence by the LE at the start, I guess it might have gave Brenner a bit more confidence and made him feel smug that, wow, look at me walking about doing what I want, when I want, and I can get away with it. So it creates a sense of invincibility, getting away with it, because he did. He did get away with it. Now, do you know what my question is to anyone? I don't know if it applies to the desecration charge. If, let's just say that Brenner, during his spring cleaning, moved the bin bags, hid them, destroyed them, and it had evidence within, whether it be Dylan's remains or more so clothing of Dylan or maybe the murder item, like a firearm. 
With Brenner being allowed to do it, and successfully, if it turned out to be evidence, would that be another charge under Brenner's name? Hiding evidence. A certain charge with that. Can anyone confirm? Could that fall under it, or would it more so fall under desecration? Hmm, desecration of evidence. Because the only charges are, as for Dylan Brown's case, is the murder of Dylan and the desecration of Dylan's body. And that's about it. Nothing about you know, contaminating or harming a crime scene, trying to dispose of key evidence. No charges there. Do you think Brenner should receive a charge along that lines of possibly hiding, destroying evidence, like with the spring cleaning? Let me know your thoughts, because I've not heard anyone talk about that. I guess it's partially because they haven't found that evidence from the spring cleaning. Maybe they found it, then they could charge Brenner with trying to... I don't know, cover up the case, maybe. Anyway, let's just refer back to her. So yeah, Brenner's stance and posture is lacking hair. As for his hair and beard, it seems to have grown back quite a bit. You can see it curling on the back, his hair. He has a bit of a bald patch on top, but it doesn't really show that much. His beard appears to be more bushier this time round compared to hair. Though this photo, the mid part, was when he was like first taken in, so a bit of a clean shave in a way, grew back, um, looked after in a way, even though some people will think, why should Brenner be looked after? Um, yeah, and that photo there. Someone did say that Brenner appeared to have definition in his forearm, so has Brenner been working out in prison the, or the jail, like a gym? And, you know, <laughs> yeah, gym in a gym. You know, it sounds a bit confusing that, but you get me, don't you? Is that a good thing, Brenner doing that? Well, you know, you could say it's good for himself. It keeps him healthy and it keeps him healthy. Lives longer, so there's more chance of getting information from him, possibly. But despite his age, what I would say is if Brenner does exercise, if he did, and if he did weights, which I feel it's probably unlikely, but if he did, it kind of makes him a little bit more deadlier, right? Anyone agree with that? And do you really want Brenner to become deadlier than he already is? Mm. And I know some people will say, Haha, Brenner's not deadly at all. We could do this and we could do that to him. Maybe, but, you know, from like Brenner's crimes and what he has done, okay, he may have used an item to get the job done, which could be considered cowardly, but he's still considered a danger, right? You look at the official court documents, right? The official court documents highlighted that Brenner was a risk to the general public. And that was then, like a year ago now, or under a year ago. If Brenner's working out doing weights, you could add on a slightly higher level of a threat level because in slightly better shape or health, I don't know, a bit more active, a bit more deadlier, depending if he gets in fights or strangles people because... It was said that Brenner strangled people in the past. So just these little factors of how when you're in prison, yes, you can become more hardened. That's not always the case. Sometimes you might become weakened. But those that become hardened and maybe exercise as well can become a bit more dangerous when they are let out. Now, is that going to happen with Brenner? Probably not. But if there was ever a slight chance, then you know maybe the general public would be kind of wary and scared, possibly. Anyway, that's um, that for Brenner. We go on to the next slide. You can see him once again here. Um, you know, obviously his hair has grown quite a bit compared to how it was here, almost bold. So that's grown back. Beard's grown back. Any other changes? Well, he's not wearing his glasses here, but then again, he didn't really have to read anything. As for his body shape, I don't know, it's... It might be a little bit hard to tell here, but he doesn't appear as fat as he once did, right? And a simple observation to make because of that, and you notice it more drastically from the early days of this photo to that photo, simply because when Brenner was eventually taken into Weber County Jail, obviously no more alcohol intake because, you know, he's, he's kind of like locked up. You're not allowed to have alcohol in that premises, right? So, possibly alcohol withdrawal. 
effects taking place, of course. Um, Brenner, in the early days, supposedly did a 30-day hunger strike, from what Candice Cooley said. Don't know why. That could have led possibly to a slight decline in Brenner's health short-term, if he's not eating properly, if not any at all. Could lead to him why he's lost a fair bit of weight, but I think more so, majority of the weight lost was because of, you know, not drinking alcohol anymore. And in a way, you could say he's become a bit healthier, losing body fat. But what about his facial expressions? How does he look? Does he look happy, angry, confident, sad, lost? Let me know your thoughts, right? If we zoom in here, and maybe we can monitor it better with the footage on replay, because I just want to highlight one point what I noticed. You know when Brenner is stood still? And then at the end where they go and say, right, now you can go. When Brenner turns around, he kind of closes his eyes for a second. And it, it's almost like he, he hits a wall, a wall of energy. You know, where you close your eyes, you think, oh, whoa, whoa. It's like something hits you in the face and then you're startled and your eyes open. I don't know if that was Brenner half falling asleep or if there was something wrong with him. I'll play you the footage later and let me know your thoughts. But as for his face here, one thing I will say, Brenner appears to have a really small mouth. You get what I'm saying? He seems to have a really small mouth. And if he is confrontational and he has been in arguments in the past shouting at people, what's his true voice sound like? Is it deep? Is it rough? Any Montello locals present right now in the chat, feel free to share your thoughts from your time around Brenner. How did Brenner sound to you? Can you give a, a distinctive description? Maybe his tone, his pace, voice levels, whatever. Feel free. But for a small mouth, he seems to be quite um, an angry person at times. Like, to be honest, Brenner seems to have the same mouth size as salty pancakes. Just an observation, that's all. Because when I looked at a photo of salty pancakes at the time, just said so there's a bit of backstory and acknowledgement so you know which one we're talking about. The salty pancakes photo of where he looked like he was face down in the pond of Lucin too long, face became bloated and looked like a chipmunk with a pair of nuts in his mouth. And that's why the mouth looked small. That's the only one I'm referring to again. They just seem to have the same mouth size. Anyway, aside from that, which isn't that relevant, when you look at Brenner's eyes, you know, he doesn't have too many wrinkles. You know, just a little observation there. But he appears to have some heavy bags under his eyes. Can anyone see? Now, it's a bit darkened as well. And some people could say, is it bruising? Well, no, it doesn't seem to be that. Most, it could be an age thing, of course. But maybe it's down to not being able to sleep properly. I, I guess if you, get, if you don't have a good amount of sleep and it happens with time, you can develop bags under your eyes. You look very sleepy, you look very tired, heavy eyes, you know, droopy eyes. Sometimes droopy eyes could be a sign of a health issue. Maybe a health issue caused by lack of sleep. I guess it depends how you look at it, right? I feel that maybe in the early days when Brenner was taken in with the alcohol withdrawal effects, maybe he wasn't able to sleep. Maybe he had the shakes, right? Maybe a little bit tense at times, a bit all over the place. Though time has passed quite a bit now, so I think he would have settled down by now, don't you think? Just let me know your thoughts in the chat to what you think of Brenner right here. Hmm. So I think what I'm going to do now is play to you the footage, the actual footage of Brenner walking into the courtroom and then like walking out. I'll play it in its standard format first time round and then I'm going to put it on a loop, okay? In case... You know, if you're wondering why it's repeated, it's repeated. So whilst I'm narrating and explaining to you, you can look back at the footage over and over again. as So you know what I'm referring to at that moment. Okay, 
let's head on to the footage right now. So, you saw that footage there. I'm going to keep it playing in the background whilst I'm talking over it because I do need to make some observations. It appears very evident that you see him stumble on in as he's almost like limping. Um, does it seem to be following with his right leg? I think he's following with his right leg. So, was it his left leg he injured, his left ankle in the past? If anyone can confirm that, that would be appreciated. If we know which leg he was like trailing on, his weak leg, and that ties in with his past injury, then there's a level of consistency and we can believe in it more. If it turns out it was his other leg and he's not limping on the correct one here, you could suggest he was putting it on and faking it. Just highlighting, okay? You can clearly see that he is chained up. It goes around like the lower part of his waist or so all the way around and as well as he's handcuffed with his arms standard procedure appears to have chains on his leg as well so he can't just run away is it chains or is it on a bar i would probably say chains because you can kind of hear the rattling and he is still able to move somewhat efficiently but yeah um just for like when he comes on in i think when he goes past the guy in that black jacket not that guy there on screen right now there we go just wait for it to catch on up there we go so ways out of view there he seems to like trip over i don't know if that was genuine or planned i think candy's coolly said that uh, it was pathetic that brenner tried tripping on over to make it seem like he was very vulnerable or something but it was all planned um you can see as with brenner walking on in in he doesn't like give any eye contact to the people on on the right does he he just like looks straight ahead and walks on in. Doesn't eye up Candice Cooley. Doesn't look at the East Idaho news reporter who's recording it. Just walks straight on. You can see him almost like leaning over, a bit hunchback once he gets up to the, well, the desk, if you want to call it that. You can see his head tilts forward slightly um, and then just remains stood still all the way through for about nine minutes doesn't say much nods his head a little bit he wasn't really in a situation position to be talking that much right no plea either it was just simply to do with talking about the attorneys and how they're going to be appointed going through that the guy on the right in that black jacket there tapping him on the back mainly did all the talking which i guess makes sense so yeah, that's it for that angle. Let's move on to where he turns around because that's where I noticed something a little bit strange and I want to know if any of you picked up on it too. So this part is where he's about to leave the courtroom and did you just notice it then? When he rotates around, he kind of stumbles a little bit or, you know, something to do with his facial expressions like, oh, oh. Do you, you get what I'm saying? When he turns around, now. He, he kind of like turns around either with his eyes closed or as he turns around, he kind of closes his eyes slightly and then it's like startled a little bit and flustered or something. I don't know. Can anyone else pick up on it? He turns around. Ooh. It's kind of like if you're on the verge of fainting or if you feel a little bit dazed, you feel a bit tired maybe because of the heat, if you've been standing still for quite some time, stationary, or if you've been in a certain temperature environment, or certain lighting, if it's like maybe a bit dark, and then you turn around, and then that sudden movement sets you off balance slightly. You know, does anyone else agree with what I'm saying? Now, is that normal? Is it just because Brenner... Um, has been stood there for about nine minutes still. So when suddenly turning around all of a sudden, it affects his balance or it makes him feel a little bit dizzy or a little bit tired. Could it be simply something like that? 
or is it some kind of health related issue you know it just seems like he takes a, a little bit of a stumble and he closes his eyes at the same time and uh, i don't know if the guard well, no the guard didn't seem to like step in or anything he just simply guided him into the correct direction i wasn't sure if um he was like catched or tapped on the arm but that doesn't seem to be the case but yeah just like on repeat you should be able to see what i'm talking about that that, that sudden like like jolt in the body i'm not quite sure how you exactly word it or put it into a singular word but he, he didn't look healthy at that that one second for the rest of it he appeared sad looking a bit lost you know you see him walking off there stumbling i mean could it be slightly caused by the disruption in balance if you are rotating round i think that could be the case possibly you know with that rotation standing still for that long whilst being chained up maybe it does impact your balance i could be wrong feel free to um you know add counterpoints if you need to but you know as Brenner was walking on out, you look at his facial expressions. Does he look like he's in pain? Um, a little bit, maybe. Um, I think the key thing is he doesn't give really any eye contact to Candice Cooley from the looks of it, just in rounds, or anyone on the side. He's looking straight ahead. With that lack of eye contact, would you say he's not as confident now? He doesn't feel as untouchable? You know, sometimes criminals can end up staring down the family when in court to be intimidating or to play mind games yet Brenner it seems as if he he just wants to get out of the place he he comes on in and leaves as soon as possible without making any eye contact any talk or anything like that it's as if he doesn't want to be there maybe it's because it's surrounded by lots of people is it because he feels uncomfortable because of the, the ones that are present, like Justin Rounds? You know, Justin won't be happy. I don't know what was going through Justin Rounds' mind at the time when he saw Brenner like that, literally. Whether it was anger, frustration, confusion as to why Brenner was acting that way out. Yeah. Just let me know down below to what you think about the presence of Brenner here and how he, how he looks and how he walks. If you didn't already know, what I will do now is play a small portion from an interview of Nate Eaton, Candice Cooley and Justin Rounds of what the family had to say about Brenner's presence inside of the courtroom. What were your thoughts seeing James Brenner walk in? Uh, he, he's despicable. Uh, his whole act of limping around, it's, it's a complete act. It's not real. I don't know if it's so he thinks we think he's going to die and make him an some sort of deal or what he but wants to, people to feel sorry he just him. wants people to feel sorry for him and it's it's all an act what did you think justin when he walked in same thing he just looks for attention to have people feel sorry for him that's all i think he's it's an act so the parents of dylan rounds appear to be strongly in consensus with one another truly believing that brenner was playing the heartstrings making it seem like he was hurt a wounded animal in distress, uh, hoping possibly the family would feel sorry for him, or maybe a judge, or maybe authority around, people in the stands, whoever is present, an act. It does make me think, if that really is the case, is Brenner going to put the same performance on in the next court hearing, the next court case, and so on? Or is this a one-off? What I do want to say is, I, I also understand that what Candice Cooley and Justin are saying could also be incorrect because I know people out there, viewers, will disagree with what the family have said. All I would say is, as for everyone in the chat watching this video too, take this into mind. How Brenner appeared recently, memorise that, make a mental note, note it down on paper, compare and contrast that behaviour of Brenner up to the next court hearing, which is the 31st of July. And if there is footage once again of Brenner walking on in on the 31st of July, compare that footage to the 5th of June to see if he moves the same, if he follows on the same leg when he's walking on in, or if it's the other way around. 
you know, if there's any mistakes made there, any inconsistencies, you could say Brenner was putting it on, that he was faking it and he failed to keep up the act. That's one way of looking at it. But if he's consistent, then you could revert back and say there might be an actual reason behind it, an actual long-term injury. I know most of us will know or supposedly know of injuries sustained to Brenner's ankle area in the past, though we've not been like face-to-face firsthand to actually see it. Whereas the family supposedly know about it or Brenner having a bad leg just because they've been face to face with him in the past and they've heard the stories as well that's where Candice Cooley mentioned it about the whole disability allowance Candice Cooley must know about Brenner's leg injury to be talking about the disability allowance there's a reason why Brenner's on it right because of the leg injury what I will say is I can understand why the family would be thinking the worst you know let's just say Brenner's in a situation he's in and he's in a level of discomfort and pain. I'd say when he was walking out of the courtroom, his eyes, the way they were flickering, um, looking straight ahead, no eye contact made around, kind of holding his facial expressions stiff, but it seemed like he was holding within pain, a level of discomfort maybe, where he's chained up a bit too tight or because of the whole dodgy leg and ankle could be a problem long-term injury long-term discomfort maybe he was feeling that discomfort whilst being in the courtroom standing still for about nine minutes and then turning around slightly dazed by it possibilities right from what we've heard back then but you can understand why the family would think the worst and jump if you want to call it that jump to conclusions that Brenner is putting it on if Brenner has already taken out their son, killed him, Brenner could be capable of many other things. If Brenner is capable of keeping uh, a calm composure, not looking guilty, not appearing guilty, and having normal conversations face-to-face with Candice Cooley and Justin Rounds in the early days, if Brenner can withhold all of that and maintain that level of behaviour, then Brenner could be capable of many other things. So you can understand why the family aren't, you know, as naive now. They're on high alert in a way. What Whatever Brenner says, whatever Brenner does, always think the worst because, in a way, the worst has already happened. So more worse things can continue or you get what I'm saying? If, you, if you're not impacted by this case, you could look at Brenner and think different. Not in support of Brenner, but just in understanding his movement and his his bad leg, right? But if you're the family, from uh, what they've experienced and gone through and how Brenner has been towards them, then you can understand why they wouldn't think the best in Brenner when the family have been directly affected because of this and more so Dylan, right? So I do get that, but all I'll say is, and I'll repeat it, in the future, just be on the lookout for future court hearings where Brenner appears on camera and see how he moves, what's his facial expressions like, is he exaggerating further, is he being consistent, or has he made a slight mistake or error? Kind of like maybe in news where people have had a broken leg or a broken arm and have weared a cast and then they've been caught on camera down the line with a cast on the wrong arm or the, on the wrong leg, right? And it was a mistake, but it was an obvious one and people caught on to it. Times on the news where a person has been in a wheelchair, supposedly paralysed and they've also been getting money from it or so the schemes, disability allowance, whatever it is in the US and then there were caught on camera years later playing around a golf getting out no wheelchair in sight so you look out for those like little mistakes little errors in the background and it could reveal a better understanding there but you know with stories about Brenner hurting his leg in the past I think someone said Bibbins did it you know if you hurt yourself you hurt yourself and it's long term long term we've seen the crutch at the Brenner's former property burnt down trailer a crutch there probably belonging to Brenner 
no longer needing it because he has healed up with time, but, you know, it's still kind of um, problematic, right? Even when you can recover from injuries, sometimes it can be long-lasting, long-term side effects, right? In this case, it could be movement. But, you know, what I do want to say is, and I said I was going to get into it, the way I visualise Brenner, how he appears there, is kind of like how he would have appeared face to face with Dylan Rounds, right? Everyone in the chat, try and maintain a level of focus right now because I need to make an important point. I know Brenner's wearing chains, he's chained up in court, so he is going to be walking a bit slow. Though, if he really was limping to that extent in court, as how he would be in real life, Dylan could just run away from Brenner. Brenner couldn't catch Dylan, right? Though, I guess if Brenner did have a gun, what can you do? Yeah. But you get what I'm saying? Brenner doesn't look that mobile. I know previous, in the early days, we were saying how Brenner appeared kind of on the big side, his age as well. There were counterpoints there saying that despite that and his speed and movement, he was kind of strong and a bit of a heavy build. So if Dylan tried wrestling him to the ground, it probably wouldn't work. Brenner does way more than Dylan. Brenner is shorter than Dylan, but that isn't always a bad thing. If you kind of lower down to the ground, the center of gravity, if they try taking you down, it would be harder because of the weight distribution, kind of like with UFC cage fighting. So there is that. Brenner is probably more grounded than Dylan Rounds is because Dylan is taller but also lighter so can easily be thrown down to the ground if it was a scuffle or a fight but in terms of speed and movement and agility Dylan arguably faster than Brenner right though I think likely case Brenner using an item a firearm to hurt Dylan to kill Dylan because the way Brenner was moving in court, I don't think Brenner could do much else, to be honest. I think Brenner would have had to have relied on a cheap shot, cornering Dylan, and a use of a firearm. I don't think Brenner would be agile or able to, you know, catch up with Dylan or move around with Dylan if Dylan was, you know, ducking, diving, or trying to escape. You, you get what I'm saying? It's like... We've run stories in the past trying to simulate how things went down on the 28th of May 2022 at the Grain Shed property, more so inside of the property, um, and how things played out. Cornered, um, an ambush, face-to-face, -face, strangling or the use of a firearm or blunt instrument. And just looking at Brenner, his appearance his movement, yeah, he doesn't look dangerous and maybe that's what the problem is, you underestimate him in a way. You can say he's cowardly because of how he might take people out or hurt people, yeah, but you can underestimate him just by his appearance, kind of like how, can he, kind of like how Christy was saying in different ways of interpreting people, right? So I, I get that. Um, but, you know, you can even look further past that beyond taking out Dylan Rounds, the the process, the method of disposing of Dylan, when you look at Brenner inside of that courtroom, limping along, walking slow, I can imagine that's the pace and speed and movement of how Brenner could be out in the desert. And because of the desert can be a bit rocky, bumpy and uneven, likely Brenner used a vehicle. And yeah, we have talked about that previous, but this footage of Brenner, how he appears physically, it just kind of reinforces the idea that a vehicle was used. It would have had to been used. You get me? Do you agree? We can do a few polls in between throughout this video. I uh, should be able to fit them in. But yeah, as for long distance, the only, the only way... Dylan would be disposed of long distance, would be via a vehicle, no question about it. Cannot imagine Brenner walking that far, and it would take him time as well. Because although we had a fair few hours in the day, and also the day after, and maybe early hours of Monday before the family got down, Brenner, you know, would have definitely had to rely on a vehicle. And it makes me think, you know, clearing up some other things, the phone, 
possibilities of the gun, the the key and gun fob being returned back. Is Brenda the type of person to be able to do all that in that short space of time? I mean, I guess it was still time to get it all done or to tie up the odd few loose ends or clean up as best as one could do. But it just seems as if in that court footage, Brenna appeared vulnerable as for movement and mobility in a sense that if Brenna was given the task to dispose of Dylan, who still weighs a fair bit and is tall, maybe a bit of an awkward weight to move and lift because it's dead weight, that Brenner would have to have relied on somebody else to assist, whether that be clearing up other areas, returning items back, or going with Brenner to whichever location to dig a hole, to roll Dylan in. You get what I'm saying? Like, because of Brenner's mobility, can Brenner even bend down, lean over onto the floor without falling over or something? Because... You saw him, he almost like stumbled or tripped over when he was in the courtroom. And even when he was leaving, when he turned around, he, he was, he turned around, he was like, whoa. I think that's what I was trying to explain earlier on in this video, where maybe you kind of, in a daze like that, in a trance, and then you kind of wake up or snap, and it's like, whoa, where am I? It's very hard to say, and it's very deep to point out, and it could be very inaccurate, but I'm going to say it anyway. That moment where Brenner turned around and it was almost like a wave of energy hit him. Maybe guidance will understand me. Miss T, I mean. When Brenner turned around and his eyes kind of like closed slightly and it was like, and it was like something hit him. Was that because he was tired or was it because he was in like a, a trance? Did that, that sudden wake up, was that like a snap? Was that like the, how Brenner would, you know, react in a moment? Is it even possible to say that Brenner has ever blacked out in the past and done bad things to people? It was blacking out, going to a bit of rage, a bit of anger, doing something and then forgetting about it afterwards. Is that even possible? Miss T, let me know your thoughts to what I just said just then. If you understand me with the, just that, like, that explanation of him turning around and how he, like, suddenly either became alive once again or snapped out of some kind of trance you know has that got anything to do with kind of like how he may have responded with dylan at the time of when he did supposedly snap hmm. i guess one thing that's a bit weird is how that news article yesterday said aggravated murder and when reading it up it said aggravated means it was planned and yet kenny's cooley has been saying all along it was a snap the court hearing of the 24th of April ruled out the death penalty. So that's because Brenner snapped. And yet this news article recently is saying that it's aggravated, that it was on purpose, like planned. And it's like, oh, well, why has the death penalty been taken away then? Maybe the news article got it wrong, right? That's what I mean. It's just a bit messy, things like that. But... What I'll do now, okay, is we'll we'll look into that other news article because I said we were going to get into it and just read through it. So, different news article by different people, read through it, see if any misinformation or any interesting bits of stuff pops up which we've never heard before. If it needs to be cleared up as we read through it, we can do so, okay? Let's head, let's head on over right now. The title of this article reads, Dylan Round's parents blast despicable James Brenner as suspect limps into court accused of murdering teen. This is by Noah Zucker, updated 152 ET, June 6, 2023. Does ET mean extraterrestrial? I don't know. But yeah, we've got the photos there, a little collage of them on the left is Brenner, as you can see. Maybe a little bit clearer compared to the one what we were looking at earlier today. His facial expressions, he doesn't look very happy. He kind of looks quite negative. And, you know, some people could say, you know, good or, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, I wonder what's going on in Brenner's mind at this moment in time, at least. Um, you know, is he, is it on the outside looking sad, but on the inside he's happy or knows what he's doing? I guess you look at it different ways. 
On the right, obviously, you've got the photo of Dylan Rounds, and below it, you've got the parents, Justin, left, Candice Cooley on the right. I think some people said a comment about Candice Cooley, her attire or something, don't know what that was about. But nevertheless, caption, a suspect accused of killing a 19-year-old farmer has been blasted by the victim's parents in the wake of a court appearance, which did happen on the 5th of June. James Brenner, 59 years of age, limped into a Utah courtroom on Monday from a hearing that lasted less than 10 minutes. True. The courtroom in Utah being in Brigham City. Here's a photo of Brenner once again. James Brenner, yep, yep, seen that. There's Dylan, little caption there. Right, the article reads, Brenner, he's accused of fatally shooting Dylan Rounds last May while squatting on a young man's property in Lucen, Utah, about 200 miles west of Salt Lake City. Right, hold on, everybody, hold on. Looks like we've got another atrocious mistake and error made in this article. Noah Zucker, um, you've got the information wrong here, okay? So where do we start? First of all, stating that Brenner was squatting on the young man's property in Lucen. That is 100% incorrect. Where Brenner was supposedly squatting was at the Grain Shed property, which is owned by different parcels of land of different people. As for the, uh, how's it worded, the young man's property, which is Dylan Rounds, that's more southeast, five mile difference. Five mile difference between where Dylan's farm is at and trailer and where the grain shed property is and where Brenner was supposedly squatting at. So Brenner was not squatting nor living on Dylan's property. Dylan does not own the grain shed, nor has he ever. There was talks that in the future he might buy it, buy the land, but you know. From the past up to his disappearance, Dylan did not own property at the grain shed, right? Didn't own the grain shed, didn't own any land around there. Dylan had his farm and his acreage, and that was it, right? And, you know, the second mistake mentioned here is by saying that Brenner was squatting at the grain shed property. And yet, as we've heard over and over again, people are saying that that's incorrect, that Brenner was allowed to live there, that Brenner was a caretaker, that he was not squatting. So why is this article once again saying he is? Let me know your thoughts. So it's not too good. Not a good start already. It goes on to say, Brenner only spoke once in court to confirm that he was okay with the schedule for his upcoming hearings. Okay. But Dylan's parents, who were both present for the hearing, thought Brenner's apparent trouble walking was nothing more than a ploy for sympathy. Maybe. In quotes, He's despicable. His whole act of limping around is a complete act. The victim's mother, Candice Cooley, told East Idaho News. Well, these photos must be unrelated. I think these photos are related to other news articles, in case you're wondering. Carrying on, though, says, in quotes, I don't know if it's so we think he's going to die or make him some sort of deal, but he wants people to feel sorry for him. Dylan's dad, Justin Rounds, echoed the concerns about the suspects said the same thing. He looks for attention to have people feel sorry for him. The father said, that's all. I think it's an act. So they're saying they think it's an act. So they're not 100% confident or for definite that it is an act, but they think and feel that way, which is understandable. If Brenner is cold and kind of manipulative or calculated in some sense, then maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe he does have a plan somewhere. Hmm. Let me know your thoughts down below to what you think, if you agree or not, if, you, if it's an act. Anything else down here? What's this? I'm a curvy girl. I used to cover up on the beach. Now I wear a thong. And you're calling that a big reveal? Okay, whatever that is. Yeah, I'm sure Dale will probably get ideas. Oh, God. Dale. Anyway, continuing on with the Dylan Rounds article. It says... At the hearing, the defendant's lawyer, Michael Studebaker, asked Judge Brandon Maynard to appoint a co-counsel for Brenner. The judge said he would consider it and discussed some of the challenges he was dealing with, given that Brenner is facing both state and federal charges. Right. 
in quotes, Mr. Brenner is in federal custody and each time this court acts, it has to get permission from the federal government to bring Brenner in. Yeah, we've heard that before. Dylan's body hasn't been found, but evidence connected to the victim was recovered near Brenner's trailer. 19-year-old boots were found by a dirt pile and his phone was recovered from the bottom of a nearby pond, known as Lucen Pond. Does that all check out? Hmm. Dylan's body hasn't been found, but evidence connected to the victim was recovered near Brenner's trailer. The dirt mound, the boots, which isn't exactly mentioned here, which is a bit poor. Brenner, um, 19, yeah. From nearby pond, yeah, it's kind of nearby. Right, it says, Brenner was charged with aggravated murder. And you saw desecration of a human body in March. Oh, no, why have we gone through this again? Why are they saying aggravated murder? I thought it was supposed to be a snap. Candice Cooley has referred to it as a snap all this time. And I thought the court was in agreement with Brenner snapping as well, considering they took the death penalty away. And yet here, the same that it was done intentional, that maybe it was planned? Mm. Well, it doesn't say premeditated, does it? It just says aggravated, that it was on purpose. But I guess it depends how you look at the definition then. Some of the articles say aggravated, and I guess others don't say aggravated. They might use a different term. Just let me know your thoughts, okay? Because it is a little bit confusing when different words are used, maybe for the same thing. It might make you double think. But then again, some words are literally different in meaning from one another. And I guess in this case, with Candice Cooley family believing that Brenner snapped, that hit some people online and like the Shatka lady believing that Brenner snapped. But in a way, I could understand that too. And yet these articles are saying that it was on purpose and there was no snapping. It was kind of like more ready, prepared for it. Mm. Seems a bit dodgy, doesn't it? Right, anything else? I mean, well, it's, oh, fair enough. I don't know if I did read it. Maybe I, I, I didn't mention it before. It said 19-year-old boots were found by a dirt pile. Yeah, yeah, so it, it did mention the boots. Apologies about that. Anyway, it says, Brenner, he had already been in custody on firearm charges since June 2022. Uh, yeah. After Brenner was charged, Justin recalled a conversation with the suspect that may have hinted at a motive for the killing. Right, okay. In quotes, this is from what Justin said previous. When I got there, Brenner was talking about how Dylan backed into his horse gate, the father said. He was a little frustrated and I didn't think a whole lot about it at the time, but that could have been what set him off. Investigators also recovered a video from Dylan's phone which appeared to show Brenner with bloodstains on his shirt and arms as he's cleaning a gun according to court documents. The video was recorded about 30 minutes after Dylan got off the phone with his grandmother which is the last time anyone in the family heard from him. Brenner's ne next court hearing is scheduled for July 31st. Dylan's parents, Justin Candice, blasted suspect. There's Brenner, Brenner charged again. Okay. So that's it for that. I mean, the only thing what it fails to do is, okay, it mentions it here about possible conversation, the conversations in the past, which possibly hints at the motive for killing. Yeah, I, I get that, that you know, like a trigger, if Dylan did back into a horse gate and Brenner got uh, like annoyed by it. Yeah, I get that. But why is this article not taking into account what Justin Rounds has said previous in other interviews? If any of you aren't quite aware, Justin was talking about how back in 2020 or 2021, I think it was 2020 or 21, one of them, where basically Dylan Rounds was around Brenner at the time, up at, I think, Justin's grandfather's house, something like that, or father's house. And um, opposite to the house, they got pigs and put them there. And Justin wasn't too pleased about it and, I guess, confronted him and talked to them. And Justin, I guess, had it out, worded it the way he thought at the time and thought nothing of it and then left. But that seemed to rattle Brenner, Brenner saying to Dylan that he didn't like being spoken to in that way by Justin and also hinting and saying that 
like threat, threatening language that he wanted to kill Justin Rounds at the time. Dylan heard about that and made a phone call to Justin to try and defuse the situation and let you know let Father know that Brenner wants to kill Justin. And Dylan passed that message on. Mm. So you got that. Other times, maybe like there was a point in the past where Bibbins supposedly overheard Brenner saying, oh, I want to kill Dylan Rounds. And then in 2021, when Don Haitley, Brenner, Dylan were at Justin's shop and bringing the truck on down, when Dylan wasn't in the same room, and Justin was elsewhere, but monitoring the camera and the audio, picked up a conversation between Don and Jim about how Jim was appearing very jealous of um, um, of Dylan, of like what Dylan has and how he handles equipment and so on. Jealousy shown. So, you know, you see this level of jealousy, you see these levels of threatening behaviour in the past, wanting to kill Justin, Dylan's father, back then. And then fast forward to 2022, Killing Justin, uh, killing Dylan Rounds, the son instead, you know, God, not good, is it? And on top of that, Brenner's past track record: crime, reoffending, hurting people, fatal woundings. You know, just well, not fatal, but woundings to hurt people. Yeah, not good, not good. And you know, if you're aware of all of that and aware of that, you know, someone issued you a threat, then if you got children or someone like that, family, around that person that's been threatening and has a past criminal behaviour, history, it's like, whoa, you know, got to take some kind of action, but no one did, right? Now, Candice Cooley may have never been threatened by Brenner, but Justin was, so kind of serious, right, even back then, but this article mentions none of that, kind of disappointing. Not as many mistakes made here, though, at the top, the beginning, the way it opened, you know, the, the sentence, it was terrible in terms of accuracy. Yeah, still not good. Let me know your thoughts, well. So if you do have any additional points which you weren't able to fit into the live chat, make sure to share all your additional thoughts and information down below in the comments section. Feel free to like this video and maybe share it to others to spread awareness of this key body language analysis of Brenner because it's never been truly done before until now, okay? Once again, another first done, you know, first attempt, which maybe other people haven't. So make sure to like the video and share it to spread awareness, of course, of the Dylan Rounds case and as well Brenner, his appearance, his presence and Maybe it can generate new ideas and new outcomes. You never know. And any questions down below, try and respond to them as soon as possible. Okay. So I think that's it for now. As said, there are still videos to come in the coming days or so. Um, I did do a little announcement video earlier on today. Be sure to check up on that too if you haven't watched it already. And yeah, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. See you next time. Goodbye and good night.